Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Alter Ego Podcast. I'm your host, Jack Austin. With me, as always, Mr. Ryan. How's it going? Sorry, Connor, I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, my lovely wife, my seductress, Miss Megan. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Good. I'm so glad you're good. All I know is I, I just had a realization. Can I kill this real quick? Thanks. Wow. That was abrupt. Ryan, you know, when we became friends all those many moons ago. Many, many moons ago. How, how could we have ever known that we were going to spend this much time together? I feel like I see you at least three times a week now. It's getting there. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's just a wild thing to me. Don't you? Isn't it weird when you meet somebody, you don't know like how impactful they're going to be on your life? Yeah. Like, you know, we, I think we've talked about it here before. I worked with your wife mm -hmm. and you heard things about me. I heard things about you. And I was like, man, I can't wait to meet this guy. And Ryan on the other end is going, man, I don't know if I need to beat this guy up <laughs> because I am a little brash. I'm, I, I like to, to make people laugh. And sometimes your wife didn't think I was funny. Oh, I thought it was hilarious once I found out what she, what she said. And, um, so she used to wear glasses. So I was always used to call her Velma. And anytime she would say something, I go, Oh, jinkies. Especially after she had long hair and then she cut it short. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, you're leaning into it. She was like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I went from, do I have to beat this guy up? Like, I can't wait to meet this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so then we met, we were hanging out, he heard that I was doing podcasting, and boom, here we are. Here we are. Man. What was that, like six years ago? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a long time. Shouldn't have left you. You've gone... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Don't beat the step two. Yeah, step yeah. Two. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Ten it's gone from my friends Ryan's coming over to, Ryan. oh, Uncle Ryan. Oh, yeah. 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 Can you stop setting that right there? No. Did you guys hear it ruffling in the microphone? I hope you did. And I still remember the first time I was supposed to meet you. Unfortunately, the division came out. Oh, that's right. And I was like, uh, I got to take a rain check. I'm uh, saving New York. Playing the division. <laughs> and yeah. she, we got to the event and his wife's like, he's at home playing the division. And I'm like, damn it. I wanted to be home playing the division. Should have, man. You should have. I know. You know who wasn't playing the division? Ford Supply Company. And I can't read their ad because they haven't given me Makers a new one yet. Of natural and something <laughs> organic, all natural organic, organic soaps. Soaps for men. Men. Also for men. women. I use it too. <laughs> Since like tropical teakwood, citrus IPA, cypress, cypress pine. Just read the last part. <laughs> read the last part. That's the part that's important. Forge supply, real soap, no bullshit. No. Also 10% off. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Visit their website there at supply.com to order online and use promo code Alterigo to get 10% off your order. Also, check out the Instagram for different deals going on. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. There's a lot of times. Yes, follow their time. Instagram. We tag them in every episode. So if you don't know where it is, just go find one of our episode thumbnails uh, on Instagram or Facebook. You'll find them real quick. I just use the Evergreen. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Might have to hit the uh, soap plug again because I'm down to like two bars. Uh oh. We've got to get the soap done. Uh, back integrated we do maybe he's a tony and nello's tony and nello's <laughs> italian cuisine and grills a family uh hidden gem that's family owned and operated on the outskirts of st petersburg at 1136 Mills bay way south here of Verde, florida this is a must try for a homemade italian lunch or dinner just remember to bring your appetite because the portions are very, very generous. generous call for res today at 727-867-3577 and check out tony and Com. And this isn't really a thing, but I'm going to make it a thing and make Nello honor it. If he says fly, birds fly, ask for 5% off. That's right. Just walk in there and be like, fly, fly birds fly. Fly, yeah. eagles fly. Fly, He'll give fly. you 5% off your order. Yeah, an extra And that's five. not true, but do it anyway. Just and tell them, birds. tell them that we said yeah. that. And if you make pigeon noises, I hear it gives off 20%. Wow. Wow. <laughs> If you make that That's pigeon noise, true. he'll charge you extra. Yeah, he might kick you out. Uh, he might come anyway. out of the kitchen and throw you out himself personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like Uncle Phil used to throw out DJ Jazzy Jeff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get out. Straight Chucky. I miss Uncle Phil. Me, Me too. too. Rip. Wow. 
Rest in peace, Uncle Phil, who also did the voice of Shredder in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated yes, cartoon. Yeah, he did. Now you like him even more if you didn't know that. Yeah. <sighs> any who's a what's it? Yeah, any who's a what's it. Let's get into it, shall we? For the second week in a row, I feel like video game news and kind of like random stuff is is really taking over. Who bought who now? Well, we'll get into. Oh it. boy, is nobody nobody one? bought anybody. No, no. Oh, I was gonna say, was there another like that. one? Did somebody sell themselves? <laughs> Probably I sell myself. <laughs> every day, yeah. every day of the week. <laughs> yeah, of course they did. Uh, let's start off with some DC. First of all, the Batman right around the corner. Only so many more times we can talk about it before we get an actual review. And I'm excited. I want to mm-hmm, see it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. People are talking about. Uh, that in this movie, we've also said that it's going to be a horror movie. I heard another rumor today that that Alfred and Bruce's relationship is going to be different in this one than any other one. That they're going to tap more into Alfred's background of actually being uh, in the Royal Marines or whatever it is. Cool. And him having that militant side. It. And he's not so much the, the babysitter to Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Which I I dig. Well, like the Gotham City. Is it Gotham City? What's it's Gotham, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. the Gotham, show you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotham, he's, yeah. He's a little bit more like that than, I mean, he's kind of a badass in that show in comparison to any other Alfred I've ever seen. Not that that show is badass. I know I'm getting the freaking face from you. No, no. I, I mean, it, he, it's people's it, interpretation. He, he shows that ability of being able to like kick ass and take names and you don't yeah. ever see that out of him in any any of the other ones so right. I, I like that i like that alfred a lot and it's, i didn't know and he it's, was in the uh the marines now he understands why he's yeah. always like man get out there and do some work he'd get he Makes takes sense. he takes a lot of ass whoopings and he beats a lot of ass in gotham like i you don't really expect it from him but he 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 gets wild so if you remember in the dark knight when he's talking about uh, the Joker and how they caught him. Um, he says, you know, when some friends in his were hired by the local mm-hmm. regime to go and root them out, that's part of, you know, what he's talking about, his mercenary life, his Marines life. So Alfred is a bad motherfucker, mm-hmm. man. He, he knows what he's doing, but I love that. He's like, how'd you stop the criminal? He goes, we, we burned the forest down. I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking the jewels and giving them away. <laughs> Some people just like to watch the world burn. Yep. I was like, okay, Alfred. Okay. okay, let's go burn the forest down, Alfred. We, we let's go. You. We hear you. <laughs> that was the only movie I was on the Joker's team the whole time. I was like, come on, Joker. You can do it. You yeah, can kill I Batman. You can win, bro. <laughs> anyway, so so speaking of that, Robert Pattinson has come out, and I think this is a strategic move by him. He says there has never been a bad Batman movie. That's a direct quote. Now, his his justifying it is, you know, uh, um, that you know each of these movies had a certain tone, had a certain message they wanted to send, and they went out and they achieved it. I I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I agree with that. I haven't seen his yet. I think a lot of them have a really good story in terms of they, they know what they want to do, but sometimes it got a little too comic booky and a little too convoluted for me. That was uh, uh Batman and Robin for me or the Yeah, is Mr. that the Freeze one with and, Uma Thurman and Mr. Yeah, Freeze? And all of those that one was kind of I was crazy. like I was like, there's a lot going on here. A whole lot. And that was also the first one that introduced Val Kilmer, which which Val Kilmer does an excellent job. Does. I thought he was a good Batman. I thought he was a better Bruce Wayne. Um, but I, I don't know. I thought that was too much. And there have been some Batmans that I've just not been crazy about. Yeah, this one better not twinkle. If he does, I'm out. <laughs> this Batman, just if this Batman Pattinson, is twinkly, he gets all glitterly. I'm out. What if he and a and a criminal have a moment where he's like, he's like, you go out at night, you fight crime, you dressed as a bat and he's like say it <laughs> out loud <laughs> and the criminal's like you're Batman, Batman. <laughs> and he's like I'm vengeance and then beats the brakes off of him anyway that would be pretty funny actually how cool would that be oh, honestly boy. not far from his twilight role as a vampire that's what <laughs> that I was saying was yeah. that's why I said he better not glitter <laughs> you know, you're better rich. not twinkle you're rich. You have great resources. That's how. That's how the Riddler's gonna catch him at the end. They're gonna have a Twilight remake. Oh well. I I'm dogging Robert Pattinson. The man can act. He's really really talented. 
Don't don't judge him on on Twinkle Toes alone. I just better not have a Catwoman. I love you, Batman. I don't like you, Batman. I love you, Batman. It better not happen. No, we don't want that. No, no. Um, Twilight still annoys me to this day. If you haven't gathered that, it do- it does still. Oh man, it still annoys the shit out of me. Did you read the books? No, I did. I'm me a- too. I'm gonna hold that. I was gonna say I'm a grown man. There's no way I'm reading these books. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he's looking across the table like, "That's sorry, dog." Yeah, I got yeah. yeah. I did yeah. get dragged to all the movies with my wife. That's mandatory. Yeah, unfortunately. But it's okay. The books are better than the movies, as you can probably imagine. Um, not by much. If it wasn't for Ashley Green, that movie would have been a waste. Who? Ashley Green is a fucking hottie. Who? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? She's um, the sister. The sister with the short hair. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Understood. I, I would definitely Alice. Clap those Her cheeks. name's Alice. Yes. I know it. Alice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For I would sure. Definitely clap those cheeks. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So the other two pieces of news out of the DC universe are not as good. It's uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, the game that everybody was so hyped about. Mm. Delayed. Um, 2023. Oh, no. So a game that you probably weren't excited for is delayed no. again. And probably wasn't going to be good. That's all yeah. I got to say mm. about that. Mm. Uh, and here's here's some, like, this is a roller coaster bit of news. Gotham Knights is getting a pilot ordered. Okay. Which is great. That's Nightwing. That's mm-hmm. Red Hood. That's Batgirl. That's Damian Wayne. So this is going to be series. Yeah. The is only problem is it's going to the CW. Oh, so a live action. Oh, Ugh. all that wah, shit, shit wah, is wah. trash. And this is coming from the one who watched every single Flash season and almost all of the Arrow seasons. Uh, see, CW does not do any of this shit. Just Arrow was really good at in like until the first season, season and two. a half. Yes, yeah. and then it just every episode was the fucking same. I was just like, wait, what? And then uh, Flash, I just couldn't get behind. I really like the kid Grant Gustafson. I think you know for I what they're it. trying to know. do mm. for the budget that they have, they're doing a good job. It's just not for me uh, there, there were a couple of really good points of the series so far because i know they're in i think the last season they're doing it right now i think it's the last one but there were a couple of really high points to where like it was so different and so crazy how the storyline was changing and then it would just the next season would be like exactly like the season before that mm. i don't know i just feel like it's the same so do they give a reason why they're not putting this on hbo max uh, a lot of the CW stuff. Why? Why is the DC not going to HBO Max? Yeah, because they already have the uh, what is it, Young Justice, or I don't know what they have. But all that stuff is there. I think after it goes and lives its life at the CW, it can go to HBO because it's a DC property. I don't know. You guys, I'm thinking like showing the Red Hood, a guy who likes to kill and murder, shoot bad guys specifically. And, exactly. Why would you put that on something? Like and, and CW. That needs to be on an actual streaming service if you're going to do Red Hood any sort of justice. That's what I'm because saying. Because I think of the Netflix version of The Punisher. Punisher, exactly. They did a great job. And Punisher and Red Hood have a lot of similarities. A lot of differences, but a lot of similarities. Um, but mainly is lots of bullets, lots of artillery, lots of bad guys dead. And the CW isn't in the business of showing that to the degree of which you would want to show it. Exactly. The CW, like, so in, in, in the Marvel universe or the HBO universe, certainly. By the way, I watched the most recent Peacemaker. I think it's episode six. It's called Mern After Reading. It's one of the best shows I've seen in a long time. Not Not just Peacemaker series. That episode of that show was one of the best episodes I've seen of a show in a very long time. But to show that kind of graphic violence that you want to see out of that character, which you don't always want to see that, but certain characters are done justice better with that. You, you know, if it was HBO Max, you would see the Red Hood going through and having that carnage. Whereas on the CW, you'll get an off-screen police officer telling you what happened. Yeah, see, and that's what I was, as much as you just talked about uh, Peacemaker, that was kind of my thing. Like, you got Peacemaker, this, I don't know if it's bad, if it's just like it was in the uh, Suicide Suicide Squad, Squad, if he's that vulgar and, you know, eating bags of dicks and whatnot. I don't know what he does. He's Peacemaker. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it was supposed to be, like, violent and 
all these bad guys. Why would you? I just yeah. I think they make a lot of bad choices, DC. Well, they they they're lot. putting big names and putting it in the and I feel the wrong hands. It needs to go to a much more mature network that can really allow these characters to spread their wings and do what they're they're done justice to. Even Damian Wayne, you need yeah. violence for Damian Wayne. And the thing is, is like, who really watches the CW nowadays? Everybody streams stuff. <sighs> yeah. Which the CW does have its own streaming app, though. Yeah. So you can, like, have the app on your Xbox or whatever, and it makes it convenient to be able to watch that shit. But it's basically just yeah. CW Hulu. And you don't have to pay for it, I don't think. I think it's a free, like, I think it's free. CW? Yeah. I think it's just, like, an app so that you can find uh, all the shows in the I same mean, place. Okay. It's, it's convenient, but that's also where we had, um, what the hell is the name? The swamp guy. Oh, swamp, swamp thing. Swamp thing. Swamp guy. Swamp thing. Same thing. Um, that's where <laughs> swamp fellow. That's where we saw swamp thing on CW, and it was on HBO Max. Yeah. And the CW version was completely like slaughtered. Well, it was com- the word I would use is neutered. Neutered. Yeah. It had didn't have any of the graphics, and then you watch this on HBO Max, and you're like, whoa, that just. Rip that dude in half. You would have never seen that shit. Yeah, on watching CW. Swamp Thing on HBO, I was like, "Damn, this is gonna be one of my favorite shows." Yeah, and it true. was up until it wasn't. Yeah, but um, yeah, then it just you know, stopped. Rep for them, but that's you know, Gotham Knights, man. It could, has the potential to be so good. And I just think they're gonna kill it. Yeah, like, so I still to the- this day have never seen <sighs> The Punisher. I've only seen that one scene that you sent me. And I'm like, oh, when I get the time, I'm watching this. You talking about the, the one where he's scene. in prison? The Netflix yes. Series. And just how like Isn't brutal it's that scene true was. Yeah. Like, it's true I'm to like, Punisher though. Like, exactly. And I'm like, you can't get that on regular TV. Like, right. That's a, that's something I would hate to see on like the CW or right. even Disney Plus. Like you're never gonna get that. So now you could do a Nightwing and do a Nightwing relatively justified. Batgirl, sure. Damian Wayne, uh, I don't like it. Wasn't Nightwing a show back in the day? Mm, I think it was supposed to be in development and didn't happen. But I want to say so Nightwing wasn't was it a animated thing. though. No, it was no. a live action thing. Oh. I want to yeah. say it came on like the WB. Yeah. Oh boy. No, if it's Little W, Warner the, the Warner Brothers way back <laughs> in the day. No, I don't know. Uh, but that's that's all we got for DC today. Let us know about the Nightwing show. But let's move into Marvel, shall we? Sure, sure, or Marvel sure, sure. Comics. Uh, Tom Holland and Florence Pugh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Came out and said that they really want to see a Spider Man and Yelena crossover. Yeah, not like a not like a full movie, but they want those like characters to, to meet, meet each other. And I love it. I'm all in. I'm all in with Yelena meeting literally Anybody. anyone. Literally anybody. I want her to meet Thor. I want her to meet like really big level players. Yeah. Because she just, I don't know. She just makes me laugh. is spectacular. And she's so talented. Like even like the physicality of the role, like she's got it all. I can go put hot sauce. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Her showing up is just so good. It's a game changer. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Oh, by the way. We we talked about this about uh, Spider Man saying, uh, or Tom Holland saying, if he's playing Spider Man by thirty, he's, he's done something, done something wrong. wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, he has since come out and clarified his comments. Let's see if Megan was right. And he's saying that by then they should have a Spider Woman, a Miles Morales. Those two should be getting a lot of uh, screen time and things yep. like that. He goes. But I want to play Spider-Man forever. I want to be Peter Parker as long as I can. But if I'm still the main attraction yep. by the time I'm 30, there's a problem. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can totally get behind this. That's what I said. Oh, that's great. Because now I don't have to find you and hurt you, Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> I really like you. You're Tom's squirrely, guy. man. I don't know if you can get a hold of him. Yeah, especially in that suit. Um, but but I think that's that's really what he meant all along. And for everybody that was like, no no no, he wants to quit and be done and build affordable housing in London. I'm like, I'm sure he can do that. Like, yeah. look at Mark Wahlberg, yeah. who he's about to be in uh, Uncharted with. That dude has how many businesses? Yeah, you I mean, can still do that. And mm-hmm. playing Spider Man will definitely help fund that. Yeah, you know, he not also, to mention he also wants to settle down and have a family too, though. Yeah. Well, not to mention the next time Spider-Man or Tom Holland walks to the contract table, 
They oh, are yeah. going to have to back all the money up to his table because he has done the biggest Marvel movie of all time. He's about to be the biggest movie of all time, which mark my words, he will get there. Okay. Oh, yeah. 25 million is not that hard for that, that franchise to get to because they have been fighting tooth and nail. And only now after, when did this movie come out last December, year, right? December 13th came out in December 13th, and whatever. we're just now in February starting to talk about a movie finally beating it at the box office. Yeah. So, I mean, that movie's going to be crazy. Here's another thing that I was just kind of like, uh, uh, Holland says he regrets not talking to Andrew Garfield when he took the role. I already know how you feel about this. That role's mine. I'm taking it. You're going to pay me that money. You want me to be Spider-Man. I'm not calling and asking anybody's permission. No question. If you're the one who is running the show, I'm I'm coming to you. So he regrets it because he doesn't regret taking the no, role. No, no, he but he regrets not calling Andrew Gar- Garfield and saying they've offered me this and I just wanted you to be aware. Or is it okay? What was he? What was he right. regretting? Just kind of like like is it okay? No, like having I mean, a general like, conversation. Then we if, wouldn't have had the movie we just had. But to be honest, like what do you even really know Garfield like that? Right. No, he I didn't. Mean, and but but so so he did say that this movie was a great opportunity to finally talk to him and Toby and be like guys, you know I, I appreciate you and and every all your knowledge and stuff like that and actually get to know them and be friends, which is cool. I don't want that kind of stuff to be over with. I'm ready for this universe to do this and become a bowl of spaghetti, and we see characters like that interacting more often. Mm-hmm. If I was him, I just would have got a burner phone. And sent my message like be in your spider suit here at this point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then I just sort of showed up in the spider suit like Yeah. I'm the new Spider Man. Yeah. That would have been kicked cool. his ass and walked off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't have to beat him up, but But you would have. Maybe. You gotta show dominance. I'm the new Spider Man. Uh, that's punk. right. <laughs> Uh, speaking of No Way Home, we found out the streaming service that the movie's going to be going to. Um let's Not see. Not Disney Plus, I Stars. Assume. Stars. What? With a Z. I, oh, because it wouldn't go to Disney Plus because it's Spider Man. Yep, but I some. sat there thinking to myself, who the hell do I know that even has stars? I inadvertently, every now and again, will turn it on my Hulu and then get charged like double. I'm like, what the hell? Why is Hulu so ex-? Oh, yeah, I forgot to turn off stars. And I only do it to watch the Spider Man movies. That's so, how I knew that's where it was going to go. So this is my. <laughs> Not that I, I'm in a unique and beautiful position where I don't have to ask my wife about this. Well, when the unique, special, beautiful butterfly version of Spider-Man comes out on Blu-ray, DVD, and Laser Brain, where they just zap it into your mind, I can go, we're getting this. Yep. Because we're not getting stars. Nope. <laughs> so I, I, just, I don't get it. And one of these days, I think that Xbox and Disney and all them are just going to get tired of it and go, you know what? We're buying you. Yeah. Thanks. We own you now. I mean, Disney owns half of everything else. Yeah. It's yeah. not like it would cost, oh, I don't know, $70 billion. Right. Disney's got that laying around. I was going to say. Yeah. That's walking around money for the little mouse. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Change. I don't know. And by this point, I, I hope you're not still ducking spo- spoilers from No Way Home. If you are, we're about to start talking about one. I'm not even giving you a countdown. Just you should know by this point that Daredevil Charlie Cox was in the movie. He shows up, he catches a brick, and says it's because he's a really good lawyer. And it was my second favorite cameo in the movie, next to Andrew Garfield. But Charlie Cox has come out and said, I want to play Daredevil forever. This is what I like to see. From my superheroes. We've talked about that on this show before. We all want that, right? Mm-hmm. So here's here's the quote. Let me get to the actual quote from Charlie Cox. I hope I don't sound greedy, but I hope I get to do loads more in terms of Daredevil. I hope to be involved way, way more for many years. I hope it never ends. Us too, Charlie. Us too. <laughs> Bless you. Good grief. Excuse the praise. Um... Yeah, for sure. I mean, like Daredevil, there's so many applications, so many things you could do. Mm-hmm. I mean, for street level superheroes, he's one of the icons, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, 
Daredevil at this point has interacted with almost every team under the sun. He's been with the Fantastic Four. He's hung out with the X-Men. He's definitely been street level with Spider-Man. He's dealt with Nick Fury. I mean, what has Daredevil not done? He is one of those Marvel Knights, one of those guys that's been around forever. He so hasn't, he hasn't uh, read the newspaper in a while. And he's one of the <laughs> he's one of the only good defenders that was in the series on Netflix. It was him and Jessica Jones, mm -hmm. in my humblest of opinions. That's why I never watched any of the Netflix things, because I didn't know what was actually good and what was bad. Yeah. Some people like Jessica Jones. Some people didn't like Jessica Jones. Some people like Luke Cage. Some people didn't like Luke Cage. Daredevil, I thought about watching, and I'm like, you know what? No. You should watch Daredevil season one and two. You should watch Jessica Jones season one, which... You can ask this one. It, to me, was the best overall of all the series. Jessica Jones season one was the one that got me like the most on the edge of my seat and hyped up. There are some great choreography, but then watch Punisher season one, and then you can be done. Punisher season two was very convoluted. I wasn't a big fan of it. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't really dig on Punisher season two. But that's good. I mean, we want to see things like, uh, you know, our, our characters be played by the same folks uh, until we start getting into those alternate earths, then sure. Throw another actor in. I don't care. I just like seeing the consistency. Just make right? Ryan Reynolds play everybody. <laughs> I'd watch that movie. Me too. I'd watch an insane daredevil play all those movies and play all those characters in his head. Speaking of insane, there have been so many rumors coming out about Dr. Strange. Like, so, so many. Good ones? Bad ones? Ones that make you go, holy crap. These are not verified, so I don't feel like I'm spoiling you. These are just uh, hypotheticals that have been thrown around. And probably true, then. One of them is talking about uh, us seeing the Illuminati in this movie. Now, the Illuminati, famously, is... Iron Man, T'Challa, Reed Richards, Professor X, and Doctor Strange. I was thinking of an entirely different Illuminati. Yeah, I was thinking I about know the you were. Illuminati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what it's loosely based off of. <laughs> okay. But what? you're meant to see them, which just think of the characters I just listed. Are you kidding me? And one of the rumors is that it might be Patrick Stewart playing professor x in the movie Man, now apparently this happening. came from twitter so we don't know oh, how it's true definitely it is. not legit but it's somebody who has correctly predicted a lot of marvel movies in the past i i don't want i don't want to post the link because i don't want to contribute to the nonsense and the craziness but i mean i am ready to see one of these famous franchises show up i'm impatient i know i don't care yeah, I just don't know how you throw in X Men. Yeah, and like, Illuminati's a good way to do that. I mean, I could see uh, the Fantastic Four. We've already had movies, and you could just scrap them, and yeah, they put them there. You know who they are. Just to throw Professor X in there and the X Men into this world now. So Little that's change. why I think the multiverse is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Multiverse and Loki and the things that are all. <laughs> kind yeah. of coming up and being uh, brought into the universe because if you're talking about a Professor X from another universe, then you're talking about X-Men from another universe that haven't had to be here to see all these, you know, world-ending catastrophes, right? Yeah. So that's, that's your instant in. Now think about this. Wanda Maximoff runs into Professor X. Things get hairy. Professor X maybe gets killed. Then what do you get? Avengers versus X-Men. Now that is a very famous comic book series and one that's very doable. Yeah. X-Men win though. I don't disagree as long as you have the right players. As long as you have heavy, heavy hitters. And I'm so glad you brought that up because the IGN... Uh, uh, crew 
polled their listeners, which is probably a lot of the people who listen to this show, and they wanted to say who is the most popular X-Men character of all time. Oh, I don't feel like this is even worthy of having the conversation. Yes, it's Wolverine. Second by Cyclops. Uh, or maybe Jean That's Grey. not how the list goes. Oh. I'd be happy to read you from 10 to 1. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. From number 10, Professor X, Professor Xavier. Dig he's, it. He's I love the it. the last one. That's the last X-Men. He's number 10. Okay. Number 9, everybody's favorite Russian, the Colossus. Colossus. Uh, I'm kind of like, wait a minute, they didn't pull me for this because he would have been a lot higher. Number 8, Cyclops, who I'm like, wait, what? Really? When I think of X-Men, I literally think Wolverine, Cyclops, and then like Jean Grey. Same. Number 7, Jean Grey. Again, number seven. Yeah. This one is uh, interesting. Number six, Gambit. Okay. Um, I definitely, Gambit is a super popular X-Man for sure. Yeah, I think I put him about fourth. Here's one that I call bullcrap on. Uh, number five, Magneto. He's First of all, X-Man. Magneto doesn't need to be on this list. He's a member of the Brotherhood. He doesn't need to be on an X-Man list. Yep, their credentials are shot. They don't even know what an X Men is or not. <laughs> number four, <laughs> number four, another super popular character, Nightcrawler. Um, uh, number three is Rogue. Now that I've narrowed all this down, you got to be able to know who number two is. Jubilee. <laughs> really? No, Beast. No, Beast isn't even on the list of Beast. top ten. Storm. Which take out Magneto, it's Beast Storm. could go right there, but it is Storm. Storm arguably is up there for number one. You know She's what? the only X Man that I could say could possibly jump Wolverine, her or maybe Cyclops. I don't even see this list. It's not even real. Yeah, you don't have Morph on that goddamn list. Morph was a, such a funny character in you the cartoon. You guys are not no no not oh, legitimate. No Morph, no IGN Jubilee, no Cable, news. no Bishop. Fake news. Fake, yeah, fake news. I don't know. Speaking of Gambit. Uh, uh, Channing Tatum had the movie that he had in production for so long, and obviously it got into production hell, and is now canceled. Canceled. Uh, and he come out. He came out and said he's traumatized after that. Obviously, he's not being serious. And he's actually traumatized. He was speaking to the media and being funny with them, but he says he hasn't watched another Marvel movie since Gambit got canceled. But I'm sitting here going, it didn't get canceled. It just got postponed, buddy. Don't worry. X-Men are coming back. And yeah. then he will definitely get his shot to play Gambit. No. If he doesn't play it in the movie. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that could happen. That is definitely a character I do love. Then we're talking about futuristic X-Men movies where we get to see Cable and Bishop. Uh, that's where my money's at. Yeah. We want to see that, faves. too. But Gambit is is such a fan favorite that if you're talking X Men, he should be around. Especially, you see Disney or Sony or Marvel or whoever looking at the X Men and seeing this A lister like Channing Tatum that wants to play him. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I mean, right? Yeah. Uh, at this mm -hmm. point, we're looking at we could get a stacked X Men movie because so many big actors are like, yeah, I see the cash cow here. It's yeah. weird. I see Channing Tatum, and I'm like, I don't get Gambit from him. Me neither. I don't get Gambit because from him. to me, Gambit has a very you know specific be, Cajun accent. I love for I love Bradley Cooper as Gambit. I think he's a, and I love you, Bradley. Big fan of the show. I know he listens every week. I think he's a little old to play Gambit, and I don't think he. It'd be hard to pull off that French accent, that Cajun French accent. French accent. Yeah. I and mean, can Channing Tatum do that? That's what that's saying. our that's, that's our question. What I'm saying is, can't, is Again, Tatum that I don't. Much better? I don't discredit anybody anymore now that Heath Ledger has been the Joker. We've said this a thousand yep, yeah. times. Yep. I do not discredit anybody until they put shit on the television. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't deliver yeah. and they put shit on the television, then they didn't deserve that role. But who was the guy that played Gambit in the? Uh... The I movie. can't remember his I name, can't either. but I, I did not enjoy his portrayal, but I think that was a victim of production, not his acting. Uh, what was, what show was that? He was an X-Men Origins Wolverine. Oh, oh, that's right. That movie. That's right. 
And is it X-Men Origins? Yeah, because at the end, X, uh, uh, Logan is getting ready to fight Sabretooth, and, and Gambit comes out with this little, you know, ever since I... And then Wolverine just punches him in the face, and he's knocked <laughs> out. I was like, come on, don't do Gambit like that. When he's supposedly this ultra-strong, you know, X-Men, I don't know. Uh, let's take our first break, and then we've got one more bit of random Marvel news. Actually, let's go through that first. Yeah, let's do that let's first. Let's do that first. Dakota Johnson, I think she's from Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, I don't know. I know. Is being signed on to play Madame Webb in Sony's Marvel Cinematic Universe. Isn't that a weird name? Why would you call it Sony's Marvel Cinematic Universe? Hmm. Does that mean that you're fully integrating? And starting to say, you know what? Okay, Marvel, we get it. You make better movies than we do. Or trying to make oh, their own. That actually is an interesting. Is Madam Web a Spider-Man property? Yes. Oh well, maybe there's a difference between just the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Sony's Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, at this point, Sony has so many villains, so many villains. Mm -hmm. They have Green Goblin. They've got Doctor Octopus. They've mm -hmm. got. Hobgoblin, they've got Sandman, mm -hmm. Venom, Carnage, you name it. They've got all these, you know, villains, and they got Spider Man and Miles Morales and Spider Woman. Mm -hmm. So, at what point? There's got to even out a little bit, don't you think? You would think so. Taylor uh, Kitsch is the guy's name who played uh, Raymond LeBeau. And what's he from? You got him up on IMDb over there? I do. He was in John Carter, Battleship, mm. Friday Night yep. Lights. So, 21 Bridges. He was right. Okay. Okay. I actually just He's not who I thought he was. I thought he was the kid from uh what's that show? The Supernatural Supernatural. I thought he was from Supernatural. Oh, no, no. Oh. That's uh Jared Padalecki and uh what's the other guy's name? Dean uh whatever, whoever plays Dean, who is also going to be in the upcoming episode or season of The Boys. Nice. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, that's that's interesting. Madame Webb is going to be making a, a an appearance. I, I still think we're going to start seeing a full integration here soon. But anyway, oh, okay. let's take a quick break, and then we're going to get into our random news and our video game stuff. Uh, so we'll be right back. Thank you for hanging out with us. We'll see you in just a minute. And we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with us here today. We appreciate you. Uh, so I said earlier that a movie has finally dethroned Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, and it is not a comic book movie. It is Jackass Forever. I mean. Starring Johnny Knoxville, Steve-O, um, what is the uh, other guy's name? Pontius, Man. Chris Pontius, Wee Man, Preston, all those guys that we with. grew up with. At mm -hmm. this point, I saw, I heard that, and I was like, yeah. I don't care. Nope. Yeah. I am not going to sit and watch no, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. an hour and a half of these guys pranking each other. It, it just, eh, it's not for me anymore. Yeah. No. That first one was a masterpiece. I'm not going to lie, though. The previews yeah. for that new one were pretty damn funny. We saw it a few times in the recent theater yeah. uh, trips. I, I actually was a big fan of Jackass number two. Yeah. Number two, I thought was the funniest one. That's the one where they had... Uh, uh, Danger Aaron, they glued pubes on his face and uh, <laughs> threw him in a trunk oh. and made him think he was going to be executed by a terrorist. <laughs> Which one is it where he takes the uh, he rent the rental car to like the the derby? No, nah, that's Jackass truck. number two. Is that number two? Yeah, and then he brings it back. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Did you know Brad Pitt is in uh, the first Jackass? What? Did not know that. When they are running through the city in full monkey suits, that one of them's Brad Pitt. That's amazing. Oh, nice. Yeah. You just said he wanted to be in the movies. So it's Brad Pitt. At suit? this point, he just walks up and goes, hey, what's your movie about? And you're like, yeah, you're in. <laughs> wow. uh, I thought that was cool. Here's a bit of random news that oddly made me super happy, like really fulfilled my soul. Yeah, I kind of really like this news. Facebook, for the first time ever, has lost users. So net, they you know they gain users every day, but and it's always been growing. For the first time ever, they have lost users, and a lot of these big social media companies have lost several billions of dollars recently. And I can't be happier. I got to yeah. tell you, if it wasn't for you, wonderful folks out there, and my want to connect with you and get our show put across and and just interact, Facebook would not be a thing for me. 
Yeah. Uh, the whole metaverse is taking hits lately because so many people are just tired of it. Yeah, yeah. they're tired of the cancel culture, which yeah. is exactly what social media is, is turning into. And I don't want to get too far into that, no, but I just I, thought it was an interesting it piece of news to say that they had lost users for the first time since it's been around, which is, what, 20 years now? It, yeah, it's been I mean, how long has it been around? Long time. Yeah. I got one in like 2010, so I mean. Here's uh, here's another bit of interesting news that I wanted to bring up to my beautiful wife. Build-A-Bear is starting an After Dark collection. Please, God, don't tell me it's lingerie for stuffed animals. It is that lingerie. That is fucking what? disgusting. And weird shit for stuffed animals. That is fucked. So for Halloween, or for Halloween, for uh, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. I'm going to get you a leather daddy cute little frog or something. Is it only going to have like a mouth open and it's going to be wearing a strap on? It's going to have the ball gag oh, and uh, all kinds of leathers on it. I don't, I don't like that. Because I don't want that's it. what you need to be thinking about at fucking Build-A-Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, man, it's after hours, so. It's, it's not a, after hours. They, they're in a fucking mall. No, yeah. no, they have a switch, bro. They push the button, and it's all the and nice bears. Uh, yeah, and there's and like a disco ball dark, that goes Yo, slow. are you talking about like a quagmire sex room at Build-A-Bear? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you push a button, in, and like <gasps> the walls like flip. You got to walk in and be like, hey, I'm looking for that. I'm yeah. looking for that where's after the, dark. Uh, where's the after dark section? <laughs> this cute little elephant is has a legit? more. This cute little elephant has an agape asshole. If you look at you're it not, back here, you're not joking. That's a real. I'm thing. not joking. It's a real thing. Yep. Why would the? Why is it a thing? I don't, I don't know. But that it's a is thing. Not okay. No, it's certainly not. But uh, the picture they show <laughs> oh, is a, a little stuffed lion. Sitting there uh, in in an evening robe. What the fuck is that? Yeah, launches after All dark. Right. If I don't talk for the next few minutes on the podcast, I'm looking this shit up. It says it's the most fun you'll ever make. Horse shit. Let me see it. Let me see. I got, oh, hold on. I got, I got, I got to show this. this Let me get this to my man here. Oh, They're yeah. all in pajamas. That's, it's oh, not, that's... Although this one's kind of bad. <laughs> man, swagged out in the red. It's a, like a Soft red silk, silk robe. It has robe. the bear sitting there with a couple of champagne glasses. Oh, now wait a second. Yeah. I can get behind this one. It is a bunny rabbit with a bottle of Cabernet, a glass of wine, and her shirt says it's wine o'clock somewhere. Now, see, I can get behind that. But Ugh. this one, this, this kind of makes all the other bears that they put in cheerleader outfits really this fucking weird. This one with nope. him and his silk underwear and he's just got devil horns on. That's Ugh. just not. Okay. I wanted to, I just wanted to be a part of that, that marketing meeting where somebody came in and was like, so hear me out. And they're like, <laughs> all right, Gil, we've talked to you about <laughs> sexualizing our stuffed animals for the thousandth time. And he pulls out the marketing report that things aren't going well. And somebody's like, for fuck's sake, you know what? Fine. We're going to do, do it. it. I mean, some of these aren't We're going to take bad. our cutesy little animals. <laughs> and we're going to put them. This one's a dog with a heart-shaped pizza with heart-shaped pepperonis on it. It says, I want to take you out. <laughs> I just want a lion in a banana hammock. They're right. That's all we need. That's it. That's all we need. I want a gorilla. It's just like, you know, looking like he's ready to tear some shit up. No, anyway, we're getting too you know far. I want a banana, We've gone too I far. Want a gorilla with We've a gone banana too far. in his banana hammock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, uh, Scream 6 is officially announced. <laughs> God. They, it received surprisingly good reviews, which is good for them. I'm happy. And then Hollywood does what Hollywood does and instantly was like, you know what? We're going to make another one. And then another one and another one. The story's not over. This killer that could probably really easily get capped at any moment is going to have another killing spree. Yep. God, spare me. Oh, my goodness. Another one that I feel needs to finally be put to pasture. If that's the case, uh, Damon Wayans and Marlon Wayans, get ready. Yeah, another scary movie. Give us another scary movie. Um, Jurassic World Dominion is the end of the trilogy, but not the end of the series. Don't worry. People are still going to be making carnivorous dinosaurs and interacting with them and getting eaten. Don't worry. It's at this point, how many movies? Six movies? Yeah. At this point, it's six movies, but we're not done yet. And sometimes you just got to live and let die. For real. And this is one of them. Like Jurassic Park is an icon at this point. I'm like, I don't want to watch anything past Jurassic Park 2. 
Me neither. If it ain't got Savion Jackson smoking a cigarette telling me to hold on to my butts, uh, I don't uh, want to uh, watch it. Didn't say the magic word. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway. It is so good. I watched it so many times as a kid. Uh, the new TV series that's coming out, The Rings of Power in the Lord of the Rings universe, is getting its first trailer doing the Super Bowl. During. Did I say during? During. During the Super Bowl. They're playing the Super Bowl, right? The Rings of Power? Rings of Power. No, yeah. no, no. The winner is granted Rings of Power if they oh, win. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bengals, Rams. Don't know if you give a shit. Should be cool. Um, but yeah, the, I'm interested to see where that's going to go. They've got, uh, what was that? That's the one that had a million dollars per episode. Yeah, something crazy like I that. I mean, that's the one that they're really all in on. So let's see how that goes. Um, Probably not well. Oh, so the Xbox Activision deal, you said who's been bought. Nobody's been bought. However, the FTC, which I I forget what that is. Can you look up the FTC and what that I think is? It's the Federal Trade Commission. Ah, there you go. Sounds about right. Is uh is leading an investigation to the proposed takeover of Xbox buying uh Activision Blizzard. Why? Reason being, the role of the review is to determine if the $70 billion deal could harm consumers, rivals, or partners. How does it not harm every rival they have? Well, they were talking about it being a monopoly. Yeah, but it's one not. Point thing, but it's not. So it's going to go through. There's nothing they can And, and that's the thing. Do about it. Xbox and Blizzard are not the biggest uh, you know, seller in games. Yeah. I mean, not Activision to mention, technically sells... Their games sell the highest every year Mm -hmm. in Call of Duty. Yeah, but so all they have to do is say it's still cross-platform. It doesn't hurt PlayStation. Yeah. But what's so wrong with it hurting PlayStation? They've already lost, what did you say, it was $20 billion? $20 billion. I mean, so what? Get get good, Sony. You know how you guys can make that money up? Sell Spider-Man. Yeah, there's your $20 billion right there. I just hurting partners. I don't get that. It, it it grows the relationship. Harming consumers only if you're like an Xbox or a PlayStation fanboy, yeah. maybe. But then that sucks. And then if that's the case, then you have to go to Naughty Dog. You got to go to Insomnia. Hey, we didn't get Spider Man. FTC shut them down. Yeah, we didn't get Gears of War. I mean, not Gears of War, but uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Shut God of down. War. God we didn't of get War. God of War. Shut them down. Like, come on. It's There's it no way they can do it. I think this is just saying things so people will go, oh, what's yeah. going to happen? Yeah, no, they're just a studio, just like anybody else. Yeah, it's going to go through. Just like they turned around and Sony bought Bungie. Like, yeah. come on. It's just another studio. Yeah. Speaking of uh, another studio, Sony uh, PlayStation CEO says there are plenty more acquisitions to come from them. See, exactly Dang. my point. There's a bunch of more other places and there's all kinds of things being developed yeah i want to see the ftc going to 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 check on this bungie acquisition too yeah speaking of bungie so the reason bungie went to sony is because they want to turn their franchises from video games into movies so the only one i can think of destiny destiny yeah now you could do a destiny show but I, i don't know who you'd follow or how you would do that you know what i mean I mean, I, I would go see a, a Bungie or a, a Destiny movie for sure. Hey, as long as Nathan Fillion is uh, the voice in Cade 6, I'm in. I mean, if Cade 6 is even around. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Could be uh, the start of the Traveler. There that's what. I, that's probably what they would do. You'd the have Traveler to start showing from the up beginning. and making Guardians. Yeah, they'd have to start from the beginning and they'd have to get into, have all their lore actually there. Yeah. So that you don't have to try to find it and pick it apart from made up places and different things all over the place like Destiny don't, is. Don't disagree. Uh, so the last bit of news I had before we get into our, our subject matter today is that the PS5 and the Nintendo Switch have officially outsold the Wii. PS5 outselling the Wii U in one year. Well, I mean, the Wii U ain't hard to beat. I think it was trash. That's what I was going to say. Tragic. Uh, the Switch, however, has outsold the Wii console. I can see that happening. I mean, the Switch, I will still say this right now, being an Xbox Series X owner, is the best console ever made. Same. Uh, it's amazing. Nintendo also has that name with our generation right now because all of us grew up playing it. Here's another beautiful thing, too. They do, but it's because you can take it anywhere, man. Now, yes, it's like freaking Game Boy on steroids. Exactly. Nintendo has been approached and saying, hey, look, 
Xbox just bought Activision Blizzard. And look at look at Sony. They just bought Bungie. What what is X? What's Nintendo going to do? And they say not a goddamn thing. No. Why do we need to? Nintendo is the best video game developer of all time. They've got Super Mario. They've got Legend of Zelda. They got Donkey Kong. They have so many properties. And the one thing they do is instead of trying to buy fifty different studios, they just try to make their game the best it could possibly be. Yep. And they don't have to do end the world crazy graphics. Yep. And yeah. here's the thing is they're gonna you're gonna buy their game over and over and over again from all different types of generations. Yeah. How many times has somebody bought in Mario? Mm-hmm. How many times have you bought Mario Kart? How I mean, many versions of Pokemon have people bought exactly. over the world? Exactly. You want to just stop right there. You can talk about Pokemon. That's the biggest video game franchise, biggest franchise in the whole world. And technically, I think that that's a Nintendo Freak that makes them. Yeah. Well, whatever your yeah. favorite video game franchise is, Pokemon is burying them. Yep. It's crazy. It's a worldwide phenomenon. You got Pokemon Go. You're going to have actual live parks in Japan with Pokemon in them that you can go in and look at. You've got a new Pokemon game every year and new series and new stuff and new battles, new everything. People eat that stuff up. It's crazy. Yeah, they don't need to. They're making buttloads of money. Yes, metric buttloads. Um, but, yeah, that, that goes into our, our last... Uh, our last subject of the day, which is the beautiful thumbnail. Thank you very much, Megan. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Great job. I'm putting more than one up because I love them so much. Oh. So we're going to have an alternate cover this week. I dig it. I fucking love it. A variant. Um, I got to say, make it this, this show. So get rich. <laughs> <laughs> this show is based off of, and I didn't know this until I started watching it, but it's based off of the League of Legends video game. And so you're thinking to yourself, uh, I don't want to watch it. I need to know about League of Legends. False. See, you do not need to know anything about League of Legends. That's what actually hindered me, because when it first popped up and it said it was based on the game of League of Legends, heard of League of Legends, never played it, and I'm like, I'm going to let that lay, and I'll be back yeah. maybe later. This is a standalone story. Um. It kind of follows two young girls, uh, and you go to their journey. There is a bit of a time lapse, but for this being a cartoon and being what it is, well, animated, Animation. we'll call it an yeah, animated. I was going to say, don't, you, don't yeah. you disrespect it. Um, I did not expect such adult subject matter. I did not expect the violence that you get. I didn't expect uh, the, the emotion from this show which by the way one of our main characters in this show vi is played by the young lady who plays kate bishop in hawkeye yep nice which is really cool this has a good cast and the young girl uh what is her name um before she's jinx uh not pepper no fart no, no, no. fart fart her name is fart box no it's not true arcane characters um not jinx god darn she's my favorite character in the whole show i know i know i'm looking it up right now um but anyway starts with a p we'll figure it out here shortly yeah i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking but um they, they this show follows several different characters and I, I got to tell you, when we started watching it, we finished episode one and powder. instantly we're like powder. Mm -hmm. We were instantly all in and watched the whole thing oh, over yeah. a matter of a couple days. Yep. Music is great. Production is great. World building is freaking huge. You get a good sense as this show continues that it is so much deeper than what you're looking at. And if this first season is any indication, this might turn out to be one of my favorite animated shows ever. Mm, those are strong words. They are strong words. Um, it, it's really, really awesome. It's, it, it lets you feel every range of emotion watching this show. Yeah. It's from, incredibly good. From, you know, humor to desperation to anger to revenge to, uh, you know, even your villain, everybody in there, nobody's there just for filler. Nobody in this show, you're like, that person's inconsequential. That person is there because they have a real reason why they need to be there. Yep. And they're so deeply rooted in their own universe. It's crazy. 
I mean, like most anime, that's the way it is. So yeah, and this particular one, the season finale, uh, makes me think there's no way they're not doing a season two because the way they leave it off, I was just I was just watching it with yeah, Megan there's, and there's going, no way. damn, there's no way they're ending it right there. Mm-mm. So I mean, if I had to say anything, you definitely need to go watch Arcane. Don't put the League of Legends stuff out of your head. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. The only thing I can imagine is maybe you're getting some cool nods here and there to game lore if you're familiar with the games, but uh, that's it. Everything else is pure story. Mm. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it. Like, uh, as I was sitting out front watching it while you were getting ready, I'm like, you call me in, I'm like, I might wait a little 16 minutes. Let me finish this first episode. Yeah. Because, like, after you watching that first 40 minutes or whatever, 30 minutes, I'm like, I'm in. Yeah. I'm already intrigued. And that's kind of hard to do nowadays because a lot of shows, they'll, they start, but there's nothing really there. And I'm right. like, I want to know what happens. That, that's what happens. And that's kind of how I felt at the beginning with Invincible, right? Like, that first episode was a grab. And, okay, you got me. And then they kind of... They have some lulls. Incredi- Invincible is a great show. I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. But this one is just different. It yeah. hits you hard in the beginning, but it doesn't stop. Yeah, and everything that happens as you keep going, you're like, okay, this is going to make this, and this is going to make this. And then you get in love with some of these characters, and it's such a big, broad universe that one character will meet somebody else, and you'll go, oh, shit. There is a particular fight that happens on a bridge, and I remember pausing it and looking at Megan and going, it's about to go down. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely an incredible show. I mean, uh, you uh, you typically, for me, don't find yourself feeling for animated characters. You're like, this is cool. But yeah. I was watching it, and I was like, I genuinely care. I want to see what happens with this character, especially Powder. Mm-hmm. Powder, by far, was my favorite character of all. Yeah. Yeah, she's the young one, right? She's the young one mm-hmm. with the blue yeah, hair. Yeah, I kind of like her yeah. already. Yeah. She's, she's, she's already become one of my favorite animated characters. I think it's what, like, episode, I'm not going to spoil anything, but episode three or four to where shit fucking goes down it's for like sure i think it's episode three or four i think it's three i think and you're right you're all you're sitting there at the end of the episode and you're just like what in the fuck just happened yeah. where do we go from here yep. where do we go from here <laughs> like what the, what do we do now yeah. what do we do with our hands yeah we're all, we were sitting there like uh okay we're gonna roll it back next episode please and thank you yeah like it was probably too late to watch another one and we did anyway um you could probably watch this with your kids if you wanted to yeah um you probably not with really really young kids uh ours are uh 11 and 12 about that age yeah. i would let them watch this show yeah um there's some potty language for sure there some- isn't any like sex or anything that's too adult it, there might just be some potty language and definite they, uh, animated gore, I they, would say. They, they definitely already lose a star for no cheeks being clapped. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're already at no four out of five. Um, actually, you were wrong. There is oh, sex in it. Oh, there is sex in it. Oh, I they forgot get their about star that. Back. Yeah, <laughs> there is that one episode to yeah. where both of our boys would have both of their hands over their faces and being like, yeah. why are we watching this? Or girls are yucky and icky or whatever, yeah. you know. But, I mean... It doesn't show, like, it's not like, you don't see it, you're just, uh, it's obvious what they're doing. Uh, yeah. They're, it, they're naked, you can't see it. More than alluded to. It's PG-13 animated sex. Sure. It's, no it's, nipples, it's, no It's, it's more balls. sexy than the eternal sex scene, I'll say that. Yes, the eternal sex scene was like. Where you knew that those were two actors in 30 degree weather having sex on a rock. Yeah. Oh, I forgot all about that sex scene. <laughs> Yeah, you're, to forget you're about welcome. That whole entire movie. Oh but boy! But yeah, there might be but some I, naughty words, but I gotta not say, in like an adult way. I don't hand these out very often, but I'm gonna give Arcane a freaking five star. Yeah, it's it's really really stinking good. Yeah. If you like that kind of storyteller and that kind of visual, the Arcane is definitely for you. Even if you've got your interest peak, just check it out. And it's kind of funny that like Powder's your favorite, Vi is my favorite. Yeah. I love her, and she's the one with pink hair. I love Vi. I think she's awesome. She was yeah. very cool, but yeah, no. To me, uh, Powder and Little Man were my favorites. Yeah, Little Man is somebody who you meet very early on, mm-hmm. who just like every character goes through a drastic transformation. Yep. So 
Anyway, I seriously, Arcane, go do it. I've been telling everybody, if you play League of Legends, why haven't you watched it? Come on, man. Yeah. This yeah. was made just for you. Maybe in like in an episode, in a week or two, in an episode, we'll pick Ryan's brain on how he actually thinks about it. Yeah. We, it won't be the topic of discussion, we but can, maybe we'll do a quick. We can revisit that. Yeah, we'll revisit yeah, let's it. Let's definitely revisit and it. And do I a couple of spoilers sure. or something. Yeah. Uh, this is so wait hold on wait a rare occurrence just happened ryan ryan just said i'll watch it for sure oh yeah for sure so uh, I mean, this like is it uh too. yeah okay we're in we got it mm-hmm. like i said after literally watching the first little bit That's when i was out takes. in the car i was like oh i'm in i was gonna try to watch it while i was at work today and it wasn't gonna happen because i had to do a bunch of moving around and for sure someone else get it. we get and it even just like the opening scene i started it and it started to go and i'm like I can't, I gotta actually watch this. Yep. For some reason, I just feel like this is something. This I have is to not pay something. To, that, yeah, and I just don't want to listen to in the background. It, yep. Yeah, it's not one that you'll have on in the background. Because to the, me, if I had it on in the background, it's gonna catch me. Yeah, right. And that's it's it, that's the thing too. Is it even if you're understanding what's happening, it's one of those types of animated shows that's so like visually appealing. Yeah. Because of all the bright color work that's in it, and like how their weapons and shit work. Like you don't want to miss any of those details simply for the fact that you're not going to get the full effect unless you're actually watching it. And it's like that throughout the entire series. Yep. So like that doesn't ever lull or go away. It is definitely something that you want to actually watch. Yeah. It's uh, shit. So yeah, that's going to do it for us this yeah. week. That uh, Arcane really, uh, that I can't recommend that highly enough. D- how did you guys like Ryan and I's Voldemort spinoff movie idea last week? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Great. Come on. Isn't that going to be cinema gold? It is. For it sure. Is. All right. Well, um, yeah. So I hope you all have a very wonderful week. Sorry, I'm talking into the side of the microphone like yeah, a weirdo. You are being weird. But um, we love you. Yeah. Mark, please come back. We miss you. We miss you, Mark. You Mark. belong here Mark. with us, Mark. 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 He's been fully assimilated. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Mark, Mark. Is, is the new PC. <laughs> <laughs> we turned him into this wonderful PC that we have in here. Uh, and very Peace soon, we're going to start doing some more live stream stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, more uh, more stuff where you can actually see us. I don't know how you feel about that. Oh. But uh, that's a thing that's going to happen. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for us. We'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Alter Ego Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, Spreaker, wherever you listen to podcasts, we're there. Yep. Tell your friends. All like the Facebook page. Even the ones you don't like so much. Like us on Instagram. Especially if you don't like them, send them my way. <laughs> and don't forget to go get your sexy go oh Don't God. forget to get your leather daddy giraffe. <laughs> The giraffe wearing eight chokers for when you want to tell your lady you mean business. Oh my god. <laughs> it, that's absolutely Don't absurd. forget to get your dominatrix butterfly with her edible panties back here. Ew. Little kid's like, I want a baseball player. <laughs> the fuck out of here, kid. This, this is Build the Bear Build the Bear after dark. <laughs> Can't you already imagine seeing a really sweaty individual Ugh. standing in line and cutting off four or five kids because he's ready for his leather daddy build a bear? I just imagine build a bear having like the last hour that they're open that kids aren't allowed. And all the all, all the employees are like, "Fuck, here they come!" <laughs> oh, gross. Bye. Uh, we actually talked past the song.